Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Um, today I'm going to do, uh, I'm kind of really early in the game here. Um, the comic I'm talking about just came out today, so I don't have the physical copy yet, so we're just going to use the CBR, but I'm planning on, i got to go pick up comics early this week uh, on Friday, so I'm hoping that they have one left on the shelf, and then if they do, I'm going to have, well, regardless, I'm still going to have them. Uh, add this to my pull list uh, so I get the physical copy of it because I, I assume this is going to be a good comic but I wasn't sure I just wanted to wait for the first issue to come out we're talking to get of course of the new Scarlet issue uh, part of the Energon universe um, from uh, Image Comics so uh, out of the first two that have come out Cobra Commander and well Duke then Cobra Commander um, uh, like I said, I think the Duke story was really good, but I, I liked um, Cobra Commander better just because I liked the bad guys. However, with Scarlet, I like Scarlet because <laughs> she's a female character. Um, and this one story so far is making out to be as good as the Duke story. Um, it's kind of in the same vein, so they're still putting the the uh, the G.I. Joe team together. Um so it's kind of a retelling of how that happened, and like Duke, you know, you know, he was. Uh, he, they kind of started his, and, and also at the same time they're doing this, they're hinting at the Transformers being in that universe with this issue with start with this incident with Starscream, um, and I, I'm wondering how they're going to tie in Scarlet with it, but Scarlet also is not yet fully join the team because the team is still being put together but it kind of starts out with like her kind of her last like legit mission that kind of goes awry and again spoiler alert than this I'm not going to read you the comic but we're going to flip through some of the pages and you'll kind of probably I'll talk about the story um, so spoiler alert ahead of time I'll put that in the comments too or the uh, the description as well just so you know um, but uh, yeah so far, um, this first issue, better than I thought it was going to be. I was kind of thinking maybe it was going to tank, but no, nope, it's good. So, so far, everything in the Energon universe is pretty awesome. Um, so, uh, again, uh, sorry, I was going to say something, I forgot. Anyways, um, let's get into the comic. I also wanted to let people know that I did start reading some of the, I did read a couple of issues of She from the 90s and it's rough um, and the, I also did read the, the two new issues newest issues of oh, sorry three new issues of, by Dynamite Comics of Red Sonia um, uh, Vampirella and Elvira Mistress of the Dark although this one's Elvira I think versus um, HP Lovecraft and I gotta say, I'll get into them more. Uh, I, might, I might even do their their uh, reviews after this one. I might do it just all together with those three, just because they're all the dynamite comics. Um, just my overall impressions, though, were that I liked. I won't say which ones. I liked one of them a lot. Uh, I, it was better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, one of them, I was just like, it's okay. And the other one, I don't know what's going on with it. So we'll leave it at that, and then we'll get into that later. But uh, for now, let's get into Scarlet here. So this is issue one. Um, flip over here. All right, pull up the CBR. Um, so, yeah, Kelly Thompson doing the writing. Marco Ferrari. Sorry, everybody's going to start hitting me up now. Uh, let's see if I can turn the volume down on that so it doesn't come through the microphone. Um Marco Fer Ferrari, Fer Ferrari. I guess that doesn't look like the way Ferrari is spelled. But anyways, um, again, another uh, Italian gentleman here. Um, I'm assuming Marco is the gentleman. Uh, anyways, um, uh, Kelly Thompson, and then Lee L Lowridge. I guess I don't know. What, I, I, we'll look at the credits in a second, but. Um, the cover, looking at it right off the bat, roof, heavy use of Zipatone. <laughs> I see that. Um, and minimal moraine, too, even on this digital copy. But uh, that's always an issue when you uh, zip, put zip on a, on a piece, especially digitally, is you get this real bad moraine effect. 
Uh, so you really have to kind of watch your zip use. Um, I use it sparingly, not that much. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an okay cover. Um, I got to say, she, as much as, I mean, obviously I like, you know, Scarlet, because it's Scarlet, but also, you know, for her attractiveness, she is not drawn overly, I guess she's subtly attractive in this. She's, her suits, as you can see there, it's got a kind of like, it's kind of baggy-ish. I mean, I guess that's what it would be. But again, I, I don't like it to go super realistic. I like it to go have, still have a foot solidly plant in comic book world where things aren't real. Um, but, uh, yeah, and going on her face, I guess she's, I guess they're kind of trying to really make her, you know, tout up the whole uh, red red head with the freckles type thing, you know, the kind of ginger looking girl. Um, is that, I don't know if that's a, a derogatory term. I watch too much South Park, so I don't know if it's a derogatory term or not. So, I, sorry if I offended you by calling, by saying ginger. <laughs> Whatever. Um, anyways, so let's get into it here. Let's look at, uh, so why isn't that flipping the page? All right, there we go. Oh, that's weird. It's double, uh, weird CBR. Um, so here we go. Yeah, Kelly Thompson to the writing. I've heard the name before. I can't remember off the top of my head what Kelly Thompson does. I remember her being kind of steeped in some controversy not that long ago with the usual suspects of uh, of hyperbolous nature on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, I can't remember what it was. Uh, of course, uh, apparently she's, you know, the end, and she's the she's the downfall of all the comic book industry, according to some people. But anyways, um, like I said, I'm not get, I don't get into any of that crap. I don't care about it. I, and I might acknowledge the few things here and there that kind of pop up. But you know, at the end of the day, I try to enjoy this stuff, man. It's just like it, you, you talk about a buzzkill. It's just people endlessly bullshitting and endless, endlessly just you know wanking off online about how evil everybody is or blah 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 it's just you know I, I like I said I keep saying this in every video I got about 30 years left if I'm lucky on this planet and I want to enjoy it so everybody shut the hell up let me enjoy what I want to enjoy I don't care if you don't like it I want to enjoy it <laughs> you know and by making these videos I'm hoping that some people share my opinions um, anyways Let's see, let's get back to that. Yes, Marco Ferrari. Now, that one thing I want to complain, because being a comic book artist, I do want to complain about this a little bit. I mean, rant is just a hair. I think I've ranted. Jesus, somebody just really wants to get a hold of me. Um, they ranted a bit on the, uh, on my, uh, sorry, I ranted a little bit on this. But just because it hits home um, is, and I have not, like I said, I, again, I have nothing against European artists. You know, or Latin American artists. I love me some, you know, European art. I mean, in the 90s, I kind of gave up on all mainstream Western, well, not Western comics, but mainstream comics in general, you know, Marvel and DC, and really started looking at a lot of, especially European art. And then I discovered some Latin American art that I really liked. Um, and anyways, uh, so I have nothing against these artists whatsoever. In fact, I actually kind of feel for them <laughs> I feel like uh, I feel like they're being exploited um, because a lot of these companies are all farming the stuff out to Europe and Latin America because they're working for cheaper and I'm not gonna get into the whole corporate crazy I just watched a video over lunch that kind of rubbed me the wrong way on corporatism anyway oh, Jesus sorry <laughs> but uh anyways it, yeah you know the whole thing about trying to appease shareholders and trying to, you know, maximize profits, you know, but so it's just like, hey, let's not hire any American artists that we have to pay a certain salary to. Let's pay half as much and farm it out to another country because they're low, they have a lower standard or cost of living so they can get away with paying them less. It's just like, you know, like I said, I love people getting work, and I love people who are passionate about making stuff, and I have nothing wrong with the artwork from these people that they produce. Um, but I think exploiting them for the sole purpose of, you know, because they work for cheap, uh, I mean, I guess it's good business, but business sucks, you know. And me being in my own business, I try not to, you know, 
try to be as ethical as possible. I know it's a, I know business and ethics are a contradiction in terms, but especially corporate business. But so I will get into that a little bit. That's one thing I, I, I not being hyper, hyper, hyper hyperbolic about. Um, it is it's true, <laughs> you know, uh, and I don't think anybody would deny it. You know, they might try to paint it in a better picture, but you can't really deny it because I mean, it is what it is. But I mean, that doesn't just go for the comic book industry; it goes across the board. So, it is what I is, I guess, in this day and age. Hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully, think people will get their due. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, but uh, yeah. So, anyway, that person. So, yeah, the colorist was this Lee person. I, I terrible last names. Low Ridge. Low Ridge. Low La 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 Luff, Luff Ridge. I don't know. Um, colorist. Yes. Uh, Russ Wooten letter. I think Russ Wooten does a lot of the lettering on a lot of these uh, Energon Universe comics. I believe. Um, look at one thing. I'd really also kind of irritates me and again this doesn't have anything to do with anything woke this again goes back to business i guess if anything the, the biggest thing i'm against is just this big business i think that's my you know i'm not against uh social justice warriors i'm not for just social justice warriors i'm not getting i'm not getting involved in that fight right but i will definitely voice my opinion when it comes to uh, companies just pulling shenanigans. And like I said, I guess in this regard for what I'm going to talk about with the covers, the variant covers, I guess it, it, it's buyer beware, really. I mean, because I don't fall for it, you know. And if that's a strategy they want to use to make money is to offer all these variant covers to get you to buy the same comic 30 times, right? It's on you, really. It's not on the company. I mean, I don't like that they do that, but it's not, I'm not going to, you know, the genie's out of the bottle. They're not going to stop doing it. So I think, if anything, if people just would vote with their wallet, that's the thing that comes down to this stuff, is if you want to make a change on anything, don't buy it, right? Um, I'm going to buy this comic. I'm, I'm not going to buy the, uh, I'm not going to buy the, uh, all the variant covers. I'm just going to get the one main cover or whatever I can get when I get to the comic shop, and I'll buy the one comic, right? So in that, I'm not, I am, I'm still supporting them, supporting what I like about them, but I'm not, you know, I'm voting with my wallet by saying, no, I don't want 15 versions of the same comic book with 15 different covers, right? Don't care about that stuff. And I think if that stuff bothers you too, then do the same thing. You know, if you generally like the comic, buy the comic. If you, uh, you know, if you don't want to support the variant thing that don't buy the variants um problem is there's so many people out there that just they got more money than god and they just keep spending money willy-nilly without even thinking about it and companies are right there to take it from them so i guess i guess it's on them it's on on the people who support it i just think it's a bad practice maybe i don't mind like one or two variant covers but this is a little bit ridiculous and what do we got here one two three Five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve, thirteen, forty, fifty, sixteen, seventy, seventeen different variant covers. That's like I said, I don't mind one or two at most, but oh my god, it's crazy. Anyways, we'll get past that. I, the other people, sure, the editor, you know, blah blah blah. Um. So let's just get kind of get into it. It's kind of it. It doesn't really set up like. Can't wait that issue of classic G.I. Joe is where Snake Eye is the silent issue. Um, it it kind of sets up like it's going to be that, but it doesn't. It doesn't go in that direction. It does say it, it also seems very Danger Man, very Abby Chase <laughs> in this regard too. But um, you know, it starts out with these uh, these horror, these nice panoramic panels here, and of course you see Scarlet and her diving gear surfacing from the you know coming up on the beach. Uh, at this chateau, chateau, la, 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 wherever this place is, um, like I said, she's not drawn unattractively, but she looks a little weird. Um, I mean, I guess her body looks fine. 
it's a little angular, but I mean that's a style people go with nowadays. Um, you know, she's nice and she's curvy there. And nice look job on the hair though. I like the hair. I like this this rim light here it catches catches the what would probably be moonlight more so than the light coming from the chateau. Um, uh, that's how they're gonna do the water. I was wondering. It's looking at the water. I mean, the shadows fine here, but. That's a lot of work, I find, to do that water with all zip like that. That's all zip. I, well, obviously, it's probably done with a layer of uh, of black that's set down to maybe like a twenty percent, or like a sixty, seventy percent opacity here, and then they're basically just turning that whole thing into a uh, a zip file. It looks like, or that, or they're just putting a zip on top. There, it could be. This is what it also looks like. It could be a zip file at say like twenty percent or thirty-five percent. That's more like twenty, thirty percent, yeah. And then they're maybe dropping the opacity down in the black layer to fifty percent, so that it shows through almost like a like a flat. It's just my guess. And then it looks like they're fading it in a gradient as it goes towards the island. Um, it's effective. It looks cool. It just this looks like a lot of work, but drawing water is a pain in the ass. Trust me, <laughs> especially any kind of water is drawing it is 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 hard to do. Um, but at, so she anyway, so she comes down and she changes up here and she, you know, gets uh gets her party dress on, gets to put on her party dress and grabs her, her pistol here and uh, throws her other stuff in the thing and then she goes to the party just like any good counterintelligence operative would do um and they're not really the, you don't really know what's the uh um again spoiler alerts you don't really know what's what they're buying and selling but apparently it's a some kind of you know uh what do you call it? auction silent auction or sorry a secret auction uh by uh by a bunch of rich people and uh, they're getting together to uh, buy buy and sell something. We don't know what it is yet. Um, as people walking around being fancy schmancy. Uh, and then here's the tip off. At first, I'm like, I didn't catch it at first. Just because my eyes went right to the thigh. Well, they went right to the Arashikagni <laughs> uh, symbol there on the thigh. And I at first I thought to myself... You know, goes, what goes through your mind when you see that? I think Snake Eyes, I think sna uh, uh, Snake Eyes, uh, Storm Shadow, I think Scarlet, and then, oh yeah, Jinx, right? And I should have known by the red dress. But, um, and you can see the black kind of bob haircut up there too. Although Jinx doesn't normally have a bob, she had the short haircut in the movie, but, um, and I forgot what. I forgot that. I'm sorry, Jinx was part of a Rashikagi, I think. Or maybe they're just making her. I can't remember that. They didn't talk about that in the movie. You know, the uh, Cobra Law movie. Which seems to be what they're really kind of pulling from in this. Um, but I... Uh, or for, with all of the Energon universe. But I, I didn't... I did read a lot of the Marvel comics. But I didn't read hardly any of them the IDW, well, none of the IDW, and barely any of the image when it came out. So I don't know if that was a whole thing where they incorporated Jinx. It's like, everybody's a ninja, might as well all make them part of the same clan. Uh, that seems a little weird. It'd be neat if she was, like, from some different clan, but whatever. I won't get into that. Um, you got some, you got this big rich douchebag here, you know. So you're thinking, like, all right. So that looks like Jinx. She's drawn well. She's got some shorter legs so she, and some really long arms. That is a really long arm. It's funny, you know, when I'm looking back, oh my god, that arm is way too long. I know her, her shoulders are tilted back. I remember, a lot of my criticisms in this isn't about the story, more so the art. Um, but, uh, woo, that is a out of proportion figure. Like I said, I mean, even if you're, even if you're, even if her pelvis is kicked back, you know, so her butt sticks out, and then her waist comes forward, her lower abdomen 
and then her upper abdomen and lower chest is cocked back to give her that that curve. Um, your arm isn't going to be that long. Um, and I can't even, even I'm looking at the foreshortening because you can see that the one leg is up a little farther than the other leg because her leg's pushed back and she's on her heels. Um, even with that foreshortening, if anything, that left leg of hers is too small as well. That should actually be bigger. Because they've got her knee, like the bend behind her knee, her knee pit, looks higher or on the same level as her other leg. When that one, that leg, if it's either cocked forward, it's going to be higher. If it's cocked back, it's going to be lower. And then that foot there, then that whole leg, even if it is bent at the uh, calf, um, it's still going to come back a little bit more, right? So... It's a little wonky. I think they could have, I don't know how, you know, I'm assuming this person works digitally. Maybe they work traditionally. So maybe they could have fixed it a little bit. At least, at least the legs aren't really as much of the issue. It's her, from her waist up, including those extra long alarms. I think that's what really causes the problem. I know she's supposed to be Japanese, and I know that if you've seen a lot of, especially Asian people, Asian women, and some Japanese, they have a tendency to have really short legs. Not always, but they can. But that doesn't mean that they're they have orangutan arms. You know, they're usually if they have short legs, usually they have a shorter torso, sometimes a longer torso. But their arms are going to be proportionate. This girl's got, you know, she should be swinging from vines with those those uh, orangutan arms. Anyways. Uh, so obviously, again, uh, what's her face? Uh, Scarlet spots. Uh, I, I won't give into. I won't. I won't get into the specific part of the story that has to deal with that Arashikagi, uh, the I Ching symbol on her leg. But it's a it's a message to uh, to Scarlet. Um, there we go. Now we got some some chicks, and so now we realize. Oh, they're also they're uh, they're. As you can see, the girls have lot numbers on them, and there's people with lot paddles, so um, there's a lot going on there to unpack. Not only is it they're selling, it's human trafficking, but they're also, um, there's kind of a, a spanking thing going on there, too, with the paddles and the girl, the lot paddles, and then the lot buttons on the girls. Um, maybe I was reading too much into that, but uh, that's what I'm seeing. Uh, well, Scarlet's basically not supposed to engage, but it kind of goes, she does this back and forth, uh, but she ends up engaging. And then, uh, I, I guess she picks up a crossbow from a guy, dude. It's odd that he has a crossbow. Maybe it's so you can shoot somebody without making a mess in this fancy chateau. But, uh, obviously that's her gun, or her weapon of choice is the crossbow. Usually it's the hand crossbow, but whatever. Uh, so basically, it looks like what's her face. It looks like the girl that uh, Jinx is getting out of there because she didn't save the rest of the girls. Uh, she just rescues one of them. She looks Asian as well, so I'm assuming she came there specifically for her. Um, blah blah blah. Like I said, I don't want to give the whole thing away, but um, essentially she gets in trouble and. Um, for not, you know, for engaging and not following orders. And so she basically says she quits. I don't think, is she fired? I think she gets booted out, I can't remember. So she's a reject. Um, and uh, she goes home and then she runs into stalkers there. And they've never met, apparently, before. Um, and uh, he recruits her for a job, a special mission. <clears throat> which is for the what will become the G.I. Joe. Joey Chief, sorry. Oh my gosh, it worked all morning and afternoon today, so now I'm oh, tired. Anyways, uh, there's a flashback between her and Jinx. So apparently her and Jinx had, which is not normal canon, which is new canon for Energy on Universe. Apparently they had a, a rapport. I'm not going to get into the whole shtick with them, but um, like I said, read the comic. Buy the comic. I, I suggest it. Um, 
take that for what it's worth. But I think I think you're you'll be happy. Um, little stutter. Snow job shows up. Basically, snow job. Which that name still makes me giggle every time I say it. But anyways, snow job. <laughs> Uh, drops off uh, Scarlet somewhere, obviously in Japan. If you look at that Japanese castle, um, I'm assuming you you would be assuming that it's a certain castle, um, which you probably be right. She fights some ninjas. Does some some a lot of these panels really going for the Frank Miller thing? Uh, I would say yes, but these drawings. And again, I, this isn't a slam on the artist being. You know, most likely, I don't know for certain for persons from Italy, but I'm assuming they are. Um, but that first panel, uh, with that, I know it's, I know she's got that big cumbersome suit on, but that is really wonky looking. I, it, 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 it does its job. It's, it conveys the information. I don't know what's going on with the face, though. Um, I guess she's, they're really doing, pulling the anime thing there. Um, but uh, she takes out the ninja, blah blah blah. Oh, be a nice two-page spread. A nice, a nice uh, Frank Miller spread here. Uh, you get a little bit of, get a little bit of uh, shot there in those big baggy pants. But um, like I said, not that that has to be in every issue. I just, I, I appreciate it when I see it. Um, <laughs> So she fights, blah, blah, blah. She talks to this guy. I'm not going to tell you who exactly who he is. You probably draw a conclusion on who he is if you know your G.I. Joe lore. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and basically, they send her there on a specific mission. And the mission kind of gets foobarred because I'm just going to flip to the end real quick. <clears throat> you know who shows up. Uh, knocks her out. And, uh, again, spoiler alert, well, I guess it's too late now if you watched it this far, but, um, he shows up. And then that's next issue. Lion's dead. Oh, my God, I guess I'm yawning. It's not the comics not putting me to sleep, don't worry. <laughs> um, I don't, I, I don't, I try not to take afternoon naps after I'm done working, but, oh, my goodness, I'm groggy today. I had to get up early this morning, too. Which actually, and I didn't get to bed very early last night. I'm still kind of used to my schedule, and I had to kind of alter my schedule. So I'm kind of, takes me a day or so to adjust. But uh, now that it's summer, though, uh, summer vacation, my son will be out of school. So I don't have to get up for a while, <laughs> not super early. Uh, I just get up at my normal time. Basically, my, 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 my working hours, if you want to know, if you care to know, is uh, I usually get to bed by 11.30, midnight, and I'm usually out cold by midnight, and I usually set my alarm for um, 7.30. I usually hit snooze a few times, and I try to be up by 8. I try to get at least 7 to 8 hours of sleep a night, and that's usually been pretty good. This morning I had to get up like at 6, so and I didn't get to sleep till almost 1, so a little groggy today. But anyways, so that is Scarlet number 1. Um... So just pull it back to the cover here. Uh, again, off to a good start. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the next issue. I'm looking forward to all of these uh, Energon universes. Like I said, I really, really like them a lot. Um, I think right now, outside of um, my She-Hulk and my Spider-Woman and Captain Marvel, I think... Uh, which I haven't really got to sink my teeth too far into Captain Marvel yet, but I have with Spider-Woman and She-Hulk. I, I like those right now. Um, but, uh, sorry, oh my goodness. Um, I really like the Scarlet comic. I really, really like all of these Iron Giant Universe comics. Sorry, I'm falling apart. It's a good time to stop the video. So we're going to have a short one today at 3.30 minutes. <laughs> I'm just covering one comic, so it didn't take me long. And again, I don't want to get into too much detail. The comic just came out, and I don't want to spoil it for everybody. But, um, yeah, uh, my bottom line is I think it's good. If you like G.I. Joe, and especially if you're enjoying this Energon Universe, I think it's a great addition. Check it out. 
go out to your comic shop and get it. I still have to go to my shop, comic shop and get it to get my physical copy. Um, but I'll do that this probably Friday. Uh, I've got to go out of town for some for a reason, and uh, I'm have to, I usually go on Saturdays, with, but I'm not gonna be able to make it this Saturday, so I'm gonna have to go Friday before I head out of town. So. I will catch you on the next one. I might be able to make another video before. I might make another video tomorrow as well. So there might be another one coming up. So look for that one. I might go back and do the other comics. Uh, there's not much else come, came out this week. I gotta say the comics this week are pretty slim pickings. Uh, I mean, unless you like the titles they're out. But I, for me, I'm just like, eh. Uh, I might give that Space Ghost a chance too, possibly. I don't know. But, uh, alright. I will catch you on the next one. Remember, like and subscribe. You like this one? Add your comments. Tell me all your 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 likes and dislikes. Whatever. Um, and tell me if you're check if you like this Energon universe and if you read this. Tell me if you like it or not. All right. Talk to you then. Bye bye.